Gamers, gals, and my non-binary pals. Unfortunately, the children yearn for the mines, and we must return to the reaction caves. Back to Jay Schmidt's channel. How much should a one-card combo do? I want to see what his takes on what's acceptable and like what's just a little bit too far. Because again, a lot of current Yu-Gi-Oh has kind of evolved to the point where one-card combos, as well as like the endless limitations of what extra deck monsters can do, is a little bit silly. So I want to see where he personally draws the line. I kind of draw it in the sense where like Alistair the Invoker is probably the most fair one card combo because it's either a negate or a 3100 vanilla. So yeah, let's give it a watch. It's a topic that's been discussed a lot in recent years. It just feels like there's a general direction in Yu-Gi-Oh towards more one card combos, right? My stance used to be like powerful one card combos just shouldn't be a thing. That doesn't feel like true? a modern sort of opinion anymore at this point because it's impossible to ignore the existence of one card combos or to like hope on the fact that one card combos are never going to be a thing again at this point in time even the rogue decks are doing like one card combos right when i'm thinking og one card combos can anyone yeah. think of an older or more og one card combo than like alistair oh yeah Zoo i miss fucking alistair the invoker fun fact when i was like doing my remote duel stuff and i just like kept winning event after event after event. i literally had i'm not even joking when i was like doing when i was just like smurfing remote holes i had more months of locals wins than i had local losses and by losses i mean you know times i've lost matches at locals during like a six month period i think i've won four months of locals in a row and i think i only dropped one match like over the course of two months and one of them was to fucking dragoon turbo because i was like unchained at the time and spoiler alert unchained cannot fucking out dragoon that card is like fucking god tier but secondly one of the decks that i was playing just because i was fucking bored and had nothing better to do was invoked mech knight i was like yeah fuck it i, I don't want to play ad emancipator i'm getting fucking sick of this shit i'm gonna play invoke mech knight and just fucking style on these nerds and i'll just go second some shitter would set up like a shitty blue eyes board and i'd just be normal summon alistair oh that got negated go for blue knight boom oh my god that shit was awesome Awesome. I'm missing Mech Knight Invoke. UDX is a good point. It never felt like those kind of cards were ruining the game. I mean, Zodiac was a dominant deck, but it was still a good format. Alistair never completely took over. So I feel like there is a window of opportunity in design space where you can make these cards. You can make one card combos, but they don't feel overly oppressive. Maybe there's a line at which one card combos are fine to exist, at which they don't ruin the game or they don't feel like they're ruining the game. I just want to maybe talk about about where that line is right because i mean zodiac was definitely something that was very frustrating to go against i mean like rap here was a one card combo as soon as we got you know broad bull and chalkanine and like the second wave of zoo support that's what definitely pushed zodiac over the edge into this is like a one card combo deck that could just literally do everything because you get the trident and the whip tail and you would have like the rap here into the hammer kong and it's just like this fucking super annoying headache of just like oh well the trident is negated by the hammer kong and my, my, my. It was fucking so silly. I definitely draw the line somewhere before Snake Eye Ash. No matter where the line is, Snake Eye Ash is past that line. I feel like we passed the line for me personally with Loki and Circular, which has become a complete meme at this point, but I want to keep it like a more serious discussion. That's for me personally where it kind of passed the line. Those were the kind of ones where I felt like it was frustrating that if my opponent started with that one card, they did too much. And of course, Circular looks completely tame in comparison to something like Snake Eye Ash these days. I understand that. But like, for me personally, even what Math Mech does, the fact that this deck just either sets up what it sets up or kills me with one card, I think that's past the line. Marin's yeah circular like again as much as like a meme of math mech was like it was never this like amazing deck it was always just like the worst best deck it was always just like this really bad meta deck like it was still very frustrating to be like oh yeah my opponent's just gonna like hand rip me and like send my whole board if they go first and end on like you know four hand traps in hand because that deck's a one card combo deck or my opponent would just you know access code otk me as soon as they like baited all of my interaction and they would just like with like access code and like pop my whole board and i wanted to shoot myself 
itself. So, and like, again, like one Sunseed Loki, if it goes completely uninterrupted, just because of how the deck is like literally designed and how the cards have been pushed out over the course of Fuchsia support and like incidental synergies and the Rikas. I mean, that deck just literally ends on like, like four floodgates. Like that deck literally ends on like a floodgate, a snatch steal, like a bounce. Like, oh my God, this is fucking terrorism. This I think is a good example for this. One of the main selling points of playing Marin says, first of all, your deck is relatively consistent because if you can play a lot of one card starters, you don't need to draw crazy combinations of cards. All you need to do is see one of your starters, right? And it also didn't require you to build your deck in such a way that you would plan to see like three or four engine cards, right? You can easily afford to draw three hand traps in a deck like Marincess. Why does it feel fine to play against Marincess, but it doesn't feel fine to play against Snake Eye in that regard? Like, what's the difference? I think it's relatively easy, at least for me. The difference is that one Marincess card does not win the game on its own right it's the power level right it's the ceiling of that one card i don't even know what one blue tang ends on these days but it used to be for... something like search yeah, one else. of the marincess trap cards for, uh, and rank you rank could for. also maybe set up argonaut or bubble reef could one card make argonaut plus trap i'm not even sure if it could Either way, I don't think for me personally, Marincess is the line. I think you could go a little bit more powerful than Marincess. My favorite, more modern example, Melodious. Pure Melodious, that is. And I want to emphasize pure Melodious because I still think that Ostinato is not a very well-designed card because it's lacking a restriction. The Marincess pure deck obviously still has those restrictions because it has cards like first movement solo that lock you anyways, right? The Melodious deck for me was a good example because that deck had like room for like 50 15 non-engine or something and it's relatively self-contained that's another thing i am a big fan when one card combos lock you into your own archetype or your typing or whatever this is not a guarantee that it's fair though i just want to say that it still depends on the context of what you're locked into yeah, like, like 100% where the fact that Ostinato doesn't lock you so you can technically play a Melodious package in anything as long as you're not playing like first movement. Like we saw Melodious Voiceless Voice, like that was a thing for a little bit. Or, you know, like Branded Fusion, if you just weren't a deck that cared about your extra deck that much, you would just slap in the Branded Package, like, like Voiceless Voice. Or, you know, like the fact that Snake Eye Ash doesn't fucking lock you at all, or the Fiend Swift cards don't lock you at all. But you know, like being locked into Fiends when you're playing like the Unchained cards just doesn't matter. Like, oh no, I can only summon fiend monsters in my U Bell list. <laughs> like, wow. Like, got me there. Melodious Snake Eyes was also a thing. That is true. It wasn't very good, but it was a thing people were testing out. And it's not like a little bit of success, but people just figured out, eh, it's fucking too much work. Who cares? Extra deck's too tight. Was Snake Eyes with a fire lock matter? Uh, regarding like Snake Eye with a fire lock? Like, 100%. Like, so many cards in Snake Eye are like the main thing that carries Snake Eye isn't the fact that, you know, you're playing a Snake Eye deck or like the Snake Eye cards themselves. It's the fact that the snake eyes cards themselves convert so easily into so many different cards like one snake eye ash is able to convert into the fiend smith engine which is like you know a lightning engine it's also able to convert to opelousa a wind warrior or, or fairy i don't know some white woman or if you're playing like hope harbinger you could convert into like a light dragon or the pachyon monster negate one you could turn one snake eye ash into basically whatever the fuck you wanted and it was just this very frustrating position to be in where people feel that snake eyes is probably like one of the best normal summon engines of all time is because it gives you like infinite link material to go into like ips and sps and opelousas and like promethean princess ladder climbs or go into rank eights or just like so many different things and it's just ridiculous it's very silly and what kind of options that leaves you with being locked into plants is cool and all but if you can if you have all the interrupts in the world available in the plant cards then why does it matter? If you're locked into gimmick puppets, but you still have all the tools to FTK, then why does the lock matter? I don't think that's the best argument, but it is part. Restrictions are healthy, right? Like in the case of Marincess, for example, the restrictions are very well done because if you're locked into water, you're kind of limited to what you can end on. With good hands, you have the option to like code with some other hands, you have the option to go for like a Zelanthus board wipe. But for the most part, I feel like in Marincess, you have a healthy lock. And the same is true, in my opinion, for Melodious. Because when you're locked in Melodious, you have still powerful options, but you lose a lot of crazy things you could otherwise do, right? Like you're limited to basically ending on Etoile, Huberta, and like Aria for protection. Those are the only things that really do anything on your opponent's turn when you're playing Melodious. Everything else doesn't really provide anything.
right and so i think those are good examples of something that you know works another good example that people have mentioned in chat that i absolutely agree with is centurion if calamity is banned right and we have that in master duel at the moment and it's a 100 percent fine deck to exist honestly fun to play against because if my opponent normal summons a primera in master duel even if i have no interaction in my hand their deck has grind game their deck has an omni negate but their deck will not lock me out of the game their deck will not overload me on interaction it's a completely normal game of Yu-Gi-Oh, and i think that's roughly where my personal line is right my like hot red list centurion is the most boneless wing deck of all time you look at that deck and you're like wait i thought this was supposed to be a meta deck i spent 35 dollars on blondies for no reason and then you would just realize that like oh this deck literally just ends on shooting riser or red supernova and you're just like awesome what a what a cool format <laughs> it was so dumb so silly so so, so mid <laughs> uh but like yeah like centurion is also like a great example of like a one card combo because it doesn't win you the game but you know i'm sure he's gonna talk about this later but we are reaching the point in Yu-Gi-Oh's you know accelerating power creep of fucking minecraft roller coasters where unfortunately one card combos do have to be strong enough in order to win you the game and despite your personal opinions on the matter whether or not you think they're like good or bad or healthy or unhealthy or there should be like a drawn line or they should all be allowed is that some one card combos and by some I mean a lot of one card combos are not as good or will ever be as good as snake eye ash nor should they be and that's just like a very tough pill to swallow knowing that for the past couple years uh well actually more like the past like 1.5 years uh konami has been very very indirectly uh stating to their player base that like yeah i'm sorry but one guard combos are gonna be here to stay personal line is something around centurion without calamity i think voiceless is a little bit better than centurion in that regard like what one low does is it more powerful it's pretty similar right it's an omni negate with follow-up but like slightly better because i feel like voiceless plays through hand traps better but that's another thing i think that's roughly where my line is if voiceless is over the line then not much they both end on an omni so that's bad uh i agree omnis are not the best form of interaction at the same time you do have to put it into context if the omni is quote unquote the only thing they do like in the case of centurion and master duel it's like okay but if your deck spams apo flamberge promethean engrave plus an omni that's more problematic i think it's fair to give these decks some context i personally don't believe one card combos should not exist at all and i am basing that off of the fact that i don't hate centurion i don't hate marincess i don't hate voiceless i don't hate melodious those are all decks that i think are completely fine to exist and to me that means one card combos have a space in Yu-Gi-Oh where i find them acceptable unless it's circular see you're always making fun of me for that as if that's unreasonable i think there's a difference between my opponent normal summoning primera in master duel and my opponent using circular in master duel let's say my opponent hand traps me and i have to pass primera does not kill me circular you're dead when Access i go code. second in master duel Remember my opponent normal that summons primera that that's one omni negate one my opponent activates circular i don't even know what the current standard is but it's a super factorial for hand rip sent from field omni negate terra hurts for a spell trap negate heat soul to draw two cards it's not the same this whole meme that we're riding for a year or two now it does come from my genuine concern with one card combos that i felt like got out of hand around that time as funny as you might think you are when you say like oh you criticize math mech but you think primera is okay i want to emphasize i do think there's a difference i think it's important that one card combos can be stopped and interacted with if you draw certain hand traps i think that's another issue with specifically snake eye makes it frustrating to play against is because the deck has pretty much no clear choke points because every single point where you interact with them they can re just replace it by drawing any of their extenders this is that is the most frustrating part about Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes is one of those decks where like 30% of your hands are just like, I am going to normal summon the Snake Eye Ash and pray to God that it gets there. And the other half is just like, you imperm the Snake Eye Ash. They're just like, cool, activate Fiendsmith. And you're like, shit, I guess I maybe have to Ash this just to keep them off it. And they're like, cool, activate Diabelle Star Effect to send. And you're like, shit, well, I activate imperm and hopefully keep them off it. 
and then like go into Requiem and like just resummon out another Fiend Swift and it's just like what's the point? It's so fucking cringe. And let's not forget about like Hida bringing back Ash Blossom or Dark bringing back you know like a Bistial or some shit like that. It is so fucking frustrating to play against that deck because some decks just naturally play way 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 better into Hand Trap just because of the amount of extenders that they naturally have thanks to the Konami special. This is problematic because it's basically also making those decks unstoppable and my take is that one card combos should be relatively easy to stop because those decks have a lot of room for non-engine when you play against those decks or when you play one of those decks i think what you should sign up for is if you get stopped you have to stop them with your non-engine and try again next turn i don't think it's reasonable that you can just ignore their hand traps keep playing and then just back up your board with hand trap is branded fusion okay uh i think branded fusion is hard to compare this too. it's a little different in some aspect i wouldn't say branded fusion is okay but for other reasons i don't hate branded i just hate how so much of that deck is condensed in that one card choke points are good but i don't believe that they should make you build a deck around one card and then if that one card gets stopped your deck basically does nothing unless you have a super specific combination of cards to still play you played branded yesterday and you still feel like that no i like branded especially if they banned albion i, I think branded is cool and i think branded is not easily comparable to decks like snake eye centurion marincess i think they're different because you can say whatever you want about branded at least branded cannot ignore your hand traps right if branded gets hand trap on branded fusion like ash or something that deck has to significantly change how it plays and its game plan in the tcg at the moment at least to my understanding is like if i get ashed on branded fusion i try my hardest to somehow piece together a puppet lock to not get killed which it yeah like it is so funny how i would talk with my friend john sometimes and he'd be like yeah like brandon's not like a bad deck at all getting ashed on like brandon fusion doesn't matter because there's so many combinations of hands that Have allow you, you to play through that? brandon fusion but the biggest part that makes branded fusion feel kind of silly in that sense is exactly what josh says where like sure you have a bunch of ways in order to you know pseudo piece together this combo by like doing a bunch of like cartesia gargoyle brandon opening but you have to like combine like five fucking cards in your hand in order to just like maybe get to the gargan oil send into like the albion into like the lubelion to a uh, white albion and it's just this very silly experience where like branded when it resolves branded fusion is like the greatest deck of all time and branded when it doesn't resolve branded fusion or doesn't open it is like please do not hand trap me i have nothing left it can you know there are ways to play around ash with branded i'm aware but it's not as easy and not trivial there's no one card combo to play around Ash. Right. So in some ways, I think it's okay that Branded Fusion is such a big choke point. It feels bad when you play against Brand and you don't have Ash and the deck feels like unstoppable. Right. That's also not a great feeling. But it is good that there is counterplay to that card. Does that mean Meow Meow Mew can come back? In today's environment, it could probably come back. Yeah. And this is another thing with card design that you need to be aware of. Sometimes the cards are just ahead of their time. I think if Prank Kids came out now with Meow Mew, people would not complain about it. I definitely think they have crossed the line with some one card combos like Nightmare Throne, Snake Eye Ash. They need to be careful, basically, with the one card combos that they give us, I think. What about Ponix? I mean, Fire King is fine, disregarding the Snake Eye cards in it. Makaoshi, yeah, see, this is the weird part, the confusing part about the TCG for me at the moment is like, Vakaoshi, they hit pretty much immediately because it feels like they realized peace, we didn't like this. Samurai. Like, this was something that came out and got slaughtered two weeks crow. later, which everyone liked. I think the difference between Vakaoshi and Snake Eyes is that Vakaoshi was not part of the year or two long lore archetype that OCG has decided to make incredibly powerful. Vakaoshi was legacy support, one-time thing that came out, right? I think that's why Vakaoshi was handled this way and Snake Eyes is um, handled in another way. And that's- Never forget where for like exactly like one month or like one and a half months, Wakaoshi was just the most disgusting enabler of all time. Like Wakaoshi into Scarecrow, into the, the 5 million pen summon to make our own on like summon number five and you could just play around everything. Holy shit, this deck was actually the most AIDS thing on planet Earth. It was so 
disgusting. But uh, Josh is right in the sense where they hit this deck in like five milliseconds. Whereas, like, let's be real, like Wakaoshi being a super rare and all of its accompanying cards being either, you know, common or super, as well as the fact that, you know, they just basically banned a common or like an ultra rare in Scarecrow for a legacy archetype that didn't really matter in the Grand Konami profit machine is definitely a frustrating experience to witness as someone who maybe really loved the deck compared to like Snake Eye, which is just like a deck that's very, very, very clearly overtuned. But Konami's just like, give it a minute. I want to see what deck building creativity pops up. Kind of sad because with Wakaoshi, we realized the good thing for the game was to not let this happen. But for Snake Eyes, we're not doing that for other reasons. Thinking about the fact that Tyr and Cash were also main lore, yeah, and they've been meta for a long time because of it, right? Can we agree banning around sales instead of balance is bad for the game? Uh, I mean, yes, we agree, but unfortunately, the reality we live in is that both things are an important factor for them. Selling Yu-Gi-Oh cards is a business. I think it's unrealistic to be like they should only do it from a game balance perspective, which is often where we as the community, we're coming from that standpoint. We're like, just do what's best for the balance of the game, right? But sometimes you got to accept that. Well, I mean, they do want to sell those cards that they've designed. More fun equals more money. Theoretically, in the long run, I would agree with you. I always favor the balance of the game over short term selling an archetype or something. The unfortunate reality is that people do have to kind of understand uh, if you are kind of unaware of it or kind of just starting to blind eye to it, is that you do have to come to the realization that profit-driven motives are the number one, two, and three reason why these games exist. Like these games at the end of the day are businesses whose entire goal is to just make as much money as humanly possible in regards to the products that they sell. Like if Konami could get away with charging like $180 for a booster box, they would. If Konami could get away with letting like, you know, specific snake eye formats or whatever last longer than they would. All of their card design, all of their bands, all of their everything. Everything is designed in order for them to help sell more product. These are soulless corporations whose entire goal is to just continually extract value by beating us to death with shitty tier zero formats that cost $1,500 every like three to six months and maybe giving us like a two to four month format where maybe a two to $300 deck is, you know, able to be played at a certain capacity. The number one example I like to think of is when Blue Eyes came out as, you know, like this very, very obviously push deck in order to kill off their old products that they're no longer really extracting value from. Like, why ban the cards when you could just, you know, play a new deck where you have to spend a bajillion dollars in order to get your Spirit Dragons and a bunch of other, like, you know, goofy shit. It's just extremely frustrating as a player to have to continually go through hurdles of, like, buying cards, selling cards, buying cards, selling cards, that sort of deal. It's just very bleh. On the other hand, they have managed to keep this game around for 20 plus years right which a lot of other trading card games have not managed to do so they are doing something right just look at what happened to runeterra to understand see that's the other thing yeah i actually played runeterra i loved runeterra they did a lot of things for the balance of the game and for the players and all that kind of stuff and they made it very cheap and affordable to play and the game died because of that because they didn't make enough money right there needs to be a balance between the two things i think Yu Gi Oh is more on the side of they're making too many decisions based on business and they could do a little bit more for the health of the game those were just some things i wanted to get out of my system they are things that are on my mind when i'm thinking and anticipating the august forbidden and limited list happening i think it is uh, important to discuss these things and voice these opinions especially the one card combo thing was something I, I felt very interested in on how we feel about it in the year of 2024 i feel like in 2023 it was often like one card combos just shouldn't exist period which was also something that i'm sure i've said at some point but i feel like they've shown this year that they can design one card combos combos in two very different ways right they can make them in a fine way or they can make them in a very problematic way just make more of the first kind and get rid of the second and then we're okay so just because you know there is going to be something that drops in that regards doesn't automatically mean that it's going to be for the health for the game it might just be because konami's got to push new product what if we get oss 2 what if we get the bell star 2 what if it's better? Someone's two level one fires. That'd be cool. But yeah, let me know what your guys' are thoughts on regards to the ban list, the economy, one card combos, all that sort of deals. Shout outs to Azamina, God's greatest fucking mistake. And yeah, it's gonna be it for this video.